Hello. On this episode of Retro Game Living Room, we're going to be taking a closer look at one of my favorite underrated handheld consoles of all time. This is the Milton Bradley Microvision, the world's first handheld console to contain interchangeable cartridges. So stick around. This beauty before you is the Milton Bradley Microvision. It was revolutionary as being the world's first handheld console with interchangeable cartridges. However, it was not the world's first handheld console. That honor goes to Auto Race, which I've already done a video on. The Microvision says it's a programmable electronic game system but that's misleading. The chip and, and hardware to run the game is all on the cartridge. So this is akin to a first generation console. Here's an example of a cartridge. This is Blockbuster. Each cartridge has its own screen overlay and its own button configuration. The buttons actually interact with this pad on the hardware itself. The Naked Microvision has a controller, the button pad, a screen, and this guy right here is just for static discharge. Also in the box, let's see what we have. Instructions to put on the, sh the static shield. A thanks for Milton Bradley for buying their product on their warranty registration card. And then there is a quick manual about how to use the game system. The cartridge slides into the cartridge slot and then clicks into place. Flipping the power switch on the side makes the console good to go. Vegas Slots is the only sealed Microvision example that I have in my collection. The boxes came on boards that showed, the, that showed on the back of the box mock-ups of what the game looks like, just like you would find on a modern game. And it also lists other games available for the system. Cosmic Hunter here is a good example of an open game. Let's open up the box and you'll see that inside the box the cartridge is suspended between two styrofoam holders to keep it from bouncing and jostling around. Each Microvision game also comes with a brochure style manual that folds out like an accordion. Before playing any games, let's take a look at the Microvision collection. This is a complete collection including the exclusive single import only title and every single US release title including the alternate cover for Star Trek Phaser Strike. That's enough of looking at boxes so let's play the games. Starting with A in alphabetical order we have Alien Raiders the object of Alien Raiders is to control a cannon on the left side of the screen and then to you can see me using the knobs to adjust the distance of the length of the cannon. A hit only occurs if the length of the cannon is equal to the distance of the projectile. So blast those lasers with extreme accuracy. With baseball, America's pastime goes portable on the mighty Microvision. The game only has offensive plays and you swing the bat with 
the knob with the paddle. The other buttons don't do anything else in this game. The objective is simply to hit the ball at a place where there aren't players on the field. The players, of course, being represented here by little red dots. This is also a game that's good in head-to-head -head mode, so you can play against a real player. Blockbuster may be a breakout clone, but it's a breakout clone on the go. The difficulty of the game is the speed of the ball in the small playing field. It's difficult to get under it when the ball is coming at you so fast. So you'll see here I'm losing a lot of balls really quick. I probably should have practiced and warmed up for this video, but I didn't. But I still feel like in this game in particular, the difficulty is really part of the gameplay. So I'm glad that you're able to see in this video that there are parts where I had a bit of a hard time with it. And then you get parts like this where it's satisfying. You get the ball above the bricks and it smashes a bunch of blocks for you. Overall, the game's a mixed bag of really hard and kind of a lot of fun. With bowling, you can bring all the excitement of going down to your bowling alley to your pocket. And you can do it without the cost and with none of the stinky shoe rentals. The objective here is simple. The bowling ball bounces back and forth at the bottom of the screen. And you want to try and get a strike. And you get a strike by hitting it kind of off center. Right where I just hit it is the perfect spot to get a strike. There it set me up for a spare. That was a total miss. And here comes a dead on hit, picking up the spare. In Connect 4, you use the paddle to position your piece and press the drop button. Once you press drop, the fun don't stop. But really that's not true at all because if you're wondering how great can a Connect 4 game be, not great. And how great can a Connect 4 game be in monochromatic color with only one color on the screen? Again, not great. You can see that this game makes heavy use of the screen overlay. And it also uses a different pattern block to tell the difference between black chips and red chips. Mindbuster is two games for the price of one. Two puzzle games. Now I know what you're thinking. Two games for the price of one is an incredible deal that sounds too good to be true. Well, there is a catch. You're right. The problem with this is that neither of the games are very good. Here I'm playing surround. The objective is, is to surround the dot on the screen with black squares. I'm not going to do it here because I ran out of turns and you're limited on turns in this game. It's pretty boring though. It doesn't make a ton of sense. Here we have lights out which is really just lights out. So you press the number buttons that correspond to the placement of the squares on the screen until you win just like that. Pinball is yet another paddle based game. Here the objective is to bounce the ball against the bumpers which only show up as screen overlays. If you hit them enough they'll light up. If you light all of them up I don't know what happens because I've never been able to do it. Once you lose a ball all those lights start right back over from the beginning again.
Sea Duel is the only game on the Microvision to have its own cutscene opening music and theme song. Now on the game, I'm going to play with the, with the computer as a ship and me as a submarine. As a sub, I'm the single dot. Now I, ha I can take, in my turn, I can move and I can fire, but I don't know where that ship, the three dot bar, is going to be. Once I hit go, the scenario plays out. So the ship shot at me, I shot down and missed. The ship actually just nailed me, I shot down and missed again. But here I, sh I shot to the right, I'm actually under the ship, so I'm nailing the ship and it can't do anything to hit me because I'm directly beneath it. So now the score is two to one. Me to the computer, just got the one hit. So now I've moved and I've shot again. So the strategy here depends on what ship you want, what you picked. The submarine can shoot all the way across the screen and it's a small target and it's easy to miss. However, the ship has a huge shot that it can that it can do, which takes up six spaces on the screen. But it has to be really close. So depending on which which ship you are, the sub or the ship, which vessel you are, depends on the strategy that you're playing for. This game is a blast with two players and in fact I love this game so much I actually did a video that's a review on this game alone. As the final scenario plays out I am just trouncing the computer. The final score ends up 6-1. Good. Next up on the list is Star Trek Phaser Strike where you battle Klingon warships or Phaser Strike where they're just generic aliens. Now my copy of Phaser Strike is some kind of weird misprint where the screen overlay is upside down. So today we'll be playing regular old Phaser Strike. It's the exact same game but a different name because Milton Bradley eventually lost the Star Trek license. As you can see what we have here is a very simplistic target shooting style game where you can shoot from the left, the center, or from the right of the screen to angle your shot. Super Blockbuster is like Blockbuster, but it's super. This is the only game on the console not to see a US release, so here I have the German import. One cool thing about the German import, or any of the imports, they have these really cool felt trays for the cartridge to sit in. And instead of coming with brochure style manuals, these ones are actually binded and paginated. How cool is that? The cartridges are also cooler. First of all, they're black. And second of all, they have these hard plastic springy keys instead of the membrane ones. And look, the import game snaps onto a US Microvision lickety split, no problem. It's ridiculous how fast this game throws you into the action you have to really be prepared for it. This is just like Blockbuster except you only have to des destroy two lines of blocks and the third line of blocks on the bottom think of it as your health bar. When that line of blocks goes away that's the game over. If you miss the ball it just bounces against the screen anyway so you can actually just let this game run and play itself. It'd be an interesting experiment to see what happens first. Does the computer run out of blocks first and you win or do you run out of blocks first and end up losing in the end? Or will the ball just go in a diamond shape or straight up and down and go nowhere? Who knows? Check out my full video of this here on YouTube. If you're interested in buying it, it'll cost you about 85 bucks on eBay. So what do I think of Microvision? I think it's an amazing piece of game history that can be a lot of fun, though not for everybody. Definitely if you're a collector and you're interested in the origin of video games, get a Microvision today. They're still pretty cheap.